Okay, Apple users. Today we're gonna to go ahead and make a minor upgrade to a very old piece of equipment. Let's see how relevant it still is. First off, what am I doing and why? Well, I have a 2010, it's actually the mid 2010, Mac Pro with the dual six core processor in it at I believe it was a 2.93 um, gigahertz processor. Uh, I've used this machine for photo editing, um, watching movies, storing music, storing photos, which that's my main purpose for it now. Um, emails, web browsing, all that kind of stuff. Uh, the reason I bought this um, machine in the beginning was for honestly photo uh, editing and maybe some video editing uh, way back in the day when you could use, you had these little digital handheld uh, camcorders. Um, didn't really get much into that, but it was definitely used for photos. Approximately 2011, um, Bioware came out with Star Wars The Old Republic um, MMO. That is actually the point that I started building my own computer because I run this on the um, uh, boot camp side. I could run Windows on it. And back in those days, it was Windows Vista. <laughs> And I'm sure you can understand how fun that was. Um, <clears throat> I uh, couldn't really game on it. I mean, it was okay at best. And you couldn't really update it because, or upgrade it, I should say, not just update, but beyond what Apple allowed you to do, which was AMD uh, video cards, very specific ones at that. Uh, now, the processor on this thing for its time was fantastic. And in fact, I'll show you in another video how relevant it still is in many ways. Uh, and how I can still use it for editing uh, Adobe Premiere. Is it as fast as my 9900K? No, <laughs> not when it comes to editing, but it still can be done. So I could literally use my 9900K computer for gaming and I can come back to this if I wanna be uh, rendering a video, not a problem or vice versa, frankly, I guess. Uh, but anyway, so I was bound to uh, the AMD um, graphics cards and very specific ones at that. So um, here we are now nine years later and I've been having a problem where in my uh, um, hardware monitor area here I've noticed that my GPU is stuck at 85 degrees Celsius at idle. That's pretty warm. I started doing some digging and I found out the fan has basically died. There's no repairing it and it's pretty hard a <laughs> pretty uh, old uh, piece of hardware that's in here for a graphics card and not very exciting piece at that. Um, I'll show you in here what it is uh, in just this, when we get it all torn out so you can see what it is that we're upgrading from and what we're upgrading to. Uh, and what we are upgrading to is going to be the Sapphire, Ni uh, Sapphire Nitro uh, 590. Uh, obviously I did a review on it previously. I specifically bought that this card for my Mac Pro. It's not a card I would ever buy for um, mainstream gaming on a PC, I would buy other options first. If I wanted a 590, I'd buy the uh, XFX um, card, or I, I believe it's called a Fat Boy. Eh. I'm a little, I might be off on that, but um, I would buy other cards before this one specifically if I wanted a 590 that badly, especially at the price variance. I believe the Fat Boy is 215 uh, ish dollars. This is still $300-ish, $290, somewhere in there. Um, a lot of money for the same card, and especially with this thing having the limitations it does. Anyway, that's that's a different video. I already touched on that. So um, I wanted to just show real quick what I've got for current numbers, how this runs on Cinebench R15. I'll do an open GL test because I'm not too concerned today about showing you uh, the processor uh, score, uh, but we'll do that for a different video. And then, um, we're going to go ahead and tear it down. I'm going to show you how to swap out the video card. It's actually very simple in this machine. Get it back up and running, and that'll be basically the, uh, the video here. But interesting nonetheless, in my opinion. Okay, so here we are in um, Cinebench R15. Um, just ran a quick test. Or actually, I guess it's still running. The last test I ran was at 59.62 frames per second. Uh, using the OpenGL, the um, 
card that's in here is the AMD Radeon HD 7950. We're going to see after this is done what it's going to be like once we get to the, the 590. Okay, I'm running um, Unigen's uh, Heaven Benchmark on here. We're going to run this real quick. I mean, it looks nice. It's medium settings. Everything else is basically shut off. Um, I'm going to let this run real quick. I want to see what comes back with the score. So we have a secondary, um, I guess, baseline, if you will, before we uh, plug in the new card, and we'll see how this all turns out. Okay, here we are starting to come to the end of the uh, Heaven Benchmark test. Looks like we're on scene 26 of 26. Uh, it'll give us a good baseline score here so we will, uh, so that we know what we are dealing with. So considering the fact that the settings on this were all at medium, everything was shut off, you know, no tessellation, no anti-aliasing, any of that kind of stuff. Um, minimum frames per second at 10.3, that's pretty low. Max at 105.3, that's not too bad. Um, with an average of 60.6 .6 and then an overall score of 15.27. So we're going to use that as our baseline, and we will go ahead and uh, get the other card installed here in just a second. So this process is pretty simple, actually. Um, and before I dive in, I wanted to show you, this is actually my second upgrade. The first time, they had this uh, original ATI Radeon card that came with the machine. They didn't give you NVIDIA options. They don't give you NVIDIA options, which is one of my biggest complaints in the Mac Pros now. Actually, the ones now, my complaints are multiple. There's lack of expandability, lack of upgradability. It's just you get this little tube and good luck, that's it. Uh, when it's outdated, spend more money with Apple. So that's part of the reason why I never upgraded beyond this one when it came to the Apple products. They just, I feel like they made your path uh, a dead end, really. Um, so anyway, this was the original card. Uh, it was a 5870 with a with one gigabyte of onboard memory, whopping amount of memory and uh, power there. So then I originally upgraded to the Sapphire uh, HD 7950, and this came with three gigabytes of GDDR5 memory. Now I'm upgrading to the Sapphire Nitro Plus RX 590 with eight gigabyte of GDDR, GDDR5 memory. Uh, I'm not sure how much that's really gonna make a difference. Again, my, I'm primarily doing this so that I'm uh, compatible with the newer Mojave uh, operating system um, and the fact that I believe the fan to be dead in the uh, 7950. So we're gonna dive right into this right now and uh, show you how simple this is to upgrade the machine. Uh, first, taking off the case is as, or the front panel is as simple as pulling up this, popping this off and putting it off to the side. And uh, this is what uh, you've got as far as uh, the case goes. I mean, it's real straightforward. We just got to remove this. We do so by unscrewing this, popping these off, swiping this, popping it out, popping the new one in with one little modification. I'm going to show you that here in just a moment. I hope we have enough light here. I'm, I'm positioning it like this as opposed to laying on its back purely because of lighting. It's kind of hard to see inside this case. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to undo these spring-loaded screws. What that's going to do here is release this tab or bar or whatever you want to call it that holds everything in place. It's eh, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Next, I'm going to go ahead and undo the uh, dual six pins. And we're going to stick those off to the side here and show you what we're going to do to modify those here in a second. So the button right here on the inside, push that, that slides us out. And that actually is more important. I'm just showing you the full steps on it if you've got the older card because the older card has these tabs that actually slide right underneath. So if you're upgrading from this one, this is the step you would take. 
And now, simply slide that out. And you can see it's pretty straightforward. You need to slide this forward anyway. The one other thing I did meant, didn't mention is this bar back there. I don't know if you can see this, but this bar slides with that. And that is what actually hooks on to this to keep it in place so it doesn't slide around. So anyway, we got that off to the side. Now, you'll notice in here that you've got two six-pin, mini six-pins to standard six-pin um, PCIe cables. There are two potential solutions that you can go with. I'm going to make this kind of a simple one where I'm going to use two six-pin uh, females to one eight-pin male. That way I can use the power that comes from each of these. All right, we're going to use that to plug in. The other option we could do, I could actually unplug these entirely and go directly from two six-pin males to an eight-pin male. And this could be what goes directly in to the new card. I am going with the black one just because, I don't know, it was easier to get. The, um, this one, the two six-pin male to the single eight-pin male, took like a month to get from China. This one was something I got on Amazon and it took a couple of days. And I'll put a link to this in the video description. Now one thing <clears throat> that you could do at this point that I don't need to right now because I just did it actually, is you could pull out the CR2032 battery um, and the CMOS battery and you could replace that. I don't need to right now, like I said, because I just did it. Okay, one other thing to note with this card is it does have dual BIOS options. You have a switch right here. And I'm going to go ahead and leave it on mode one, which is the one for um, the standard profile on this. Mode two is a silent profile, so it's lower power draw, lower fan speeds, all that kind of stuff. But I'm going to go ahead and leave it alone because it'll be fine inside the case. Okay, so first thing we're going to do. Let's get this installed. Okay, got that in. Go ahead and slide that. That's what locks it in place so you can't pull it out, okay? <clears throat> now this, where we're going to go ahead and plug in our PCIe adapter so that we can utilize the power that is needed, the power of the dark side being Apple computer because, you know, They don't want you fixing their equipment anymore. They don't want you upgrading. They just want you to use their stuff until it's outdated and you have to spend an insane amount of money to buy their most current hardware because that's what Apple thinks everyone will do and should do. And I won't do that anymore. Okay. Now this is a little bit of a bugger getting these things back in. So I'm going to go ahead and do so here quickly. One thing that is nice with this uh, card and its requirements, I don't want to have that one side of the fan, I suppose, probably be a bad idea, um, is it only requires the 8-pin to be connected. The 6-pin is optional. And literally, there you have it. 
That's how simple it is to swap out a card on these things. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the back plate on. We're gonna hook it back up and uh, run a couple quick uh, benchmarks. We can hopefully see the difference in the performance compared to the previous card and wrap this video up. Well, there we have it. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Installation was very simple uh, as I was explaining. Uh, it works fine, boots fine, the fan is working as I was kind of hoping it's my primary uh, need for replacing the card as opposed to going backwards and putting the original card that came with the machine in. Um, as you can see with the scores here in uh, Heaven, um, frame rates came up both in um, maximum and in average as well as your overall score. Now obviously this was on medium settings. I didn't go into running uh, the ultra settings or anything like that or playing with, around with tessellation or any of that kind of stuff is I just went with what it suggested me to run so that we had an apples to apples comparison. It's definitely a better graphics card. Uh, it's definitely cooling better. Uh, temperatures seem to be sitting in the mid 60s. Now mind you that's inside of an enclosed non-airflow optimized Mac Pro. One of my complaints of the Mac is again the inability to upgrade it beyond what it is within some constraints. Uh, the newest ones are, you just can't upgrade them. They are, they are what they are. And that's uh, what's frustrating. Uh, but I mean, it, it works great, it looks great. It's going to function for what I need it to, which is going to be continually hosting my photos and my videos. And um, I'll do some editing on here because I like how uh, the Mac feels for editing on Premiere. I can edit here and I can render on my 9900K if I'm in a hurry. Uh, it is it is faster on the 9900K by about, oh, half <laughs> than it is on this. Now part of that was the graphics card, uh, but you know, I'm going to follow up with another video and showing you how relevant this mid-2010 Mac Pro still is compared to current machines. Uh, I'll show that to you in various benchmark scores such as Cinebench and we'll do some uh, real-time real rendering. Um, I'm gonna keep this thing as long as I can. I have no intentions of going out and buying another Mac Pro anytime soon. I just, I think that uh, one, they're extremely overpriced. You're unable to upgrade them. You can't use a, uh, an NVIDIA card in them. You're constrained to what Apple thinks you should have, which is frustrating. It's, it's the main reason I won't buy an Apple computer anymore. Yes, I've got iPads, yes, I've got uh, iPhones, you know, whatever. But it's not the same as me spending my money on an eight or ten thousand dollar dual six core machine anymore. I mean, what's nice is this is a six core machine with, with total of or a dual six core machine with twelve threads, twenty four cores. It's awesome. It's been awesome for let's face it, nine years. That's a long time. Um, I'm going to keep going a little longer here with the, the new graphics card. So anyway, got not on a tangent. Don't want to get into all of that stuff. Uh, if you like today's video, you know what to do. If you dislike the video, you know what else to do. Uh, please hit that subscribe button. I'll leave um, uh, down in the comment section links to some of the items in today's video. And uh, hope to see you next week. Thanks for joining me. Bye.